partners on Fife Alcohol Support Service, supporting Fifers for 40 years. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call David Torrance to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank my colleagues who have supported the motion, allowing the invaluable work of Fife Alcohol Support Services over the last 40 years to be debated today. I'd also like to congratulate FAS on reaching this significant milestone and to welcome board members, staff and volunteers who have travelled through par to Parliament today to join us here in the public gallery. Alcohol and drug issues are ingrained in our lifestyles and are partly a result of social changes and modern day pressures. Addictions and abuses are not the same thing. An addiction to alcohol is a physiological dependence on alcohol that consists of continued compulsive drinking with individuals becoming physically dependent. Alcohol abusers, on the other hand, are typically heavy drinkers who may not drink consistently, but when they do, the effects from such high level of consumptions can have serious consequences on their own personal safety and their relationships with loved ones and families. Alcohol abuse can, however, lead to dependency. According to the Scottish Health Survey from 2017, one in, four, one in four people drink at hazardous or harmful levels. This is defined as drinking more than 14 units or roughly seven pints per week. In over two-fifths, 42% of violent crime, the victim says the offender was under the influence of alcohol. And there were 36,235 alcohol-related hospital stays in 2016-17. And 24,060 people in Scotland had at least one admission in hospital with an alcohol-related condition. In 2017, alcohol caused 1,235 deaths, a reduction of 2% from 2016. However, despite the decrease, 2017 had the third highest annual total since 2010. The facts and figures relating to economic and human cost of alcohol misuse within Fife are also startling. 2,344 hospital stays last year, with the rates of stays being six times greater amongst those living in the most deprived areas, and an average of 62 deaths a year, with a rate being three times greater amongst the most living in deprived areas. In total, alcohol-related harm is estimated to cost Fife £130 million per year. As these figures show, there is an ever-increasing need for alcohol and drug support within Fife, and there's a role of the alcohol within our society, and our relationship with it continues to change. Fife Alcohol Support Services FAST, based in Kirkcaldy, was established in 1977 to provide a community-based alcohol counselling service for individuals, family and friends affected by alcohol problems. Back then, FAST was a council on alcohol, one of the 30 or so similar organisations that span Scotland, each with a mission to address the health and social consequences of excessive alcohol use. Original councils of alcohol were founded during the 60s in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Dundee. Recognition must be given to the late John Balfour, who was instrumental in the creation of FAST. In 1973, John had joined the newly formed Scottish Council for Alcohol, for which he was served as an office bearer for many years, and is better known today as Alcohol Folks of Scotland. The charity, known in, in 1977 as the Local Council for Alcohol for Fife, broke new ground by setting up counselling and support for those with alcohol problems for many years was the only service available outside Alcohol Anonymous that provided for the needs of vulnerable adults suffering from the effects of alcohol, misuse and addiction. John Balfour's involvement with FAST continued until his passing in May 2009. He served as a chairman for 25 years until he retired in 2002 and then became honorary pre president for the charity. Staff and volunteers remember him fondly and attest to his great dignity and humanity and to his strong belief to always doing the right thing, especially when times are difficult. Since its inception in 1977, the amazing staff and volunteers of FAST have observed John's principles and have continued to progress the charity by responding to a changing role and influence of alcohol within our society. In 1995, FAST was support, supported by NHS Fife, introduced its alcohol counselling service in primary care. The charity was one of the very first services to do so. The event marked the beginning of a considerable growth for a counselling service as it responded to awareness of extent and damage of alcohol-related problems and the community need for a reliable source of help. Over the years, working in partnership with organising including many third sector organisations, Police Scotland, Fife Division, NHS Services, and Fife Community Drug Service, with which it merged with in 2015, FAST has delivered a number of key initiatives 
projects and treatment programmes which have been hugely influential and extremely effective in helping to tackle the ever-increasing problems faced by the result of alcohol and drug-related problems. The merger of the partnership between FAST and FCDS created an organisation with scope to serve the needs of an ever-increasing range of issues, with even greater organisational efficiency and increased capacity for responsive improvement and changes. These days, FAST have a multifaceted and comprehensive approach to addressing the tackle and tackling alcohol and drug harm through the four main services, alcohol support services, community drug service, ADAPT substance recovery, and the Kerner Club Network. Each of these high quality and professional services provide a vital and unique approach which serve to complement and enhance. The alcohol support service provides specialist alcohol counselling, and this work is facilitated by counsellors who are predominantly volunteers. Six staff and 15 volunteers dealt with 616 referrals during 2017-2018. The Community Drug Service provides specialist help for both individuals and families concerned about the use of substances, ranging from cocaine and ecstasy to new psychoactive substances, MPS or legal highs. Outreach support is provided through crisis counselling, advocacy and mentoring. Adapt Substance Recovery is the main drug and alcohol triage service in Fife, providing assessment for need and referral to specialist drug and alcohol services with the most significant number of referrals to the service being self-referrals by clients and family members. The newest addition to the network is the Kearney Club, introduced in 2016 and funded by a national lottery through a big lottery fund. These groups provide support to people who have become socially isolated as a result of living with a range of challenging issues. The club runs throughout Fife and offers a supportive environment for people who are isolated or lonely, whilst acting as a partner organisation to frontline services such as mental health and drugs and alcohol services. Loneliness and isolation have been emerging social issues over recent years, and whilst related, they are very different issues. It's very important to recognise and understand the differences between them to ensure the appropriate support is given, as it can both have a huge detrimental effect on individuals' physical health and mental well-being. It was a fantastic to learn that only last month the project secured funding of 350,000 from the big lottery funds improving life's programmes. This funding will allow a group to further develop the work and expand into other areas in Fife. In conclusion, President Officer, I believe the importance of the FAS and the work we do day in and day out cannot be overstated. On behalf of the 23,000 Fifers and their families whose lives have been so greatly impacted by the wonderful work of FAS staff and volunteers, both past and present, I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks for a 40-year-long, life-changing contribution to a local community. I look forward to continuing to work with them and wish them a happy birthday and every success in continuing to create a positive pathway for many more fifers in the future. We move now to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. Claire Baker, followed by Annabelle Ewing. Um, thank you for calling me at this time, President Officer. It's a pleasure to recognise the work of Fife Alcohol Support Service this evening, recognising that this is their 40th year of service, and I thank David Torrens for securing the debate. I wish to apologise for having to leave the Chamber early due to a family commitment, but I will look at the official report tomorrow with interest, particularly the Minister's response. For many years, FAST has been a leading provider of counselling and psychotherapy for people in Fife with alcohol-related problems. And following a merger with Fife Community Drug Service in 2015, they also provide a community drug service, which offers outreach support in the community for people with drug-related problems. As well as providing support for people struggling with addiction and working with them to address underlying causes and consequences, they can also provide support to families and friends who are trying to cope. Too often, people struggling with alcohol and substance abuse do not receive much public sympathy. They can be isolated as family networks are damaged by their addiction, and it can often take a while for them to acknowledge that they have a problem. Organisations like FAST provide a valuable service to often very vulnerable people. Their ADAPT service is a triage service supporting those struggling with alcohol or substance misuse issues into the best treatment that is available in Fife, supporting people to change their lives. They also offer a focus on encouraging rehabilitation and the expanding Kearney Clubs, as referred to by David Torrance, help people who are suffering social isolation to find their way back into community life. And it is good to see their recent award from the Big Lottery Fund. 
I recently attended the Fife Hall Coal Support Service AGM at the townhouse in Kirkcaldy. This was an opportunity to reflect on the past 40 years, and Jim Bett, the service manager at FAS, highlighted the importance of the charity's volunteer councillors who have been serving the people of Fife for 40 years. During this time, the service has trained 200 volunteer councillors. Jim highlighted that more than 23,000 Fifers have approached FAS's counselling services for help since it began operating. The AGM concluded with a very moving personal experience from a former client who recounted his harrowing journey of a drug addiction that has almost resulted in his death and his journey to recovery with the help of the charity's community drug service. His story highlighted the devastating impact that drug and alcohol abuse has had on so many families, resulting in often lifelong and lasting issues. I want to go back to the number of users who have accessed this service, 23,000. 23,000 people in Fife who have needed support and help from this service. These people often identified as vulnerable, with a high percentage of those suffering with poor mental ill health, which often comes from underlying traumas. So I'd like to highlight the pressures that the wider mental health services in Fife are facing. I know that Fife Health and Social Care Partnership work extremely hard and are developing programmes focusing on early intervention, on group therapy programmes and additional clinical time. However, the services are stretched with people having to wait too long for the help that they need. And too often, the voluntary sector are left to pick up the pieces of strained NHS services. It is clear there's an urgent need for a centralised, joined-up approach. And a solution that could possibly be is the addition of a mental health centre in Fife, where those who are suffering with mental health issues can be properly assessed and referred to the appropriate services. Often, the voluntary sector provision is the correct response, but like the NHS, it is one that needs to be provided with the funding that reflects their crucial role and makes sure they can deliver the service to everyone who needs it. This week, the focus for FAS is promoting safe drinking through the festive season. The service has issued guidelines with advice on practical steps to ensure that those who are drinking throughout the party season take the necessary steps to stay safe, demonstrating their commitment to promoting prevention and awareness. So, President Officer, FAS are a valuable service for people in Fife, treating everyone as a valued human being and supporting people through difficult times in their life. I would like to thank them for all the work that they do and I am pleased to see it being recognised in Parliament this afternoon. Annabelle Ewing, followed by Alexander Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I would like to congratulate my colleague David Torrance, uh, MSP, on securing this important debate this afternoon, for this gives us the opportunity in our Parliament to shine a light on the important work that the Fife Alcohol Support Service carries out right across Fife, including in my own constituency of Cowden Beath. As we have heard, there are a number of important strands to the work of FAS, and it has its roots as a provider of volunteer alcohol counselling services. Dating back to 1978, FAS has seen, as we have heard, some 200 volunteer alcohol counsellors over that period, with some of those counsellors going on to become leading figures in alcohol and drug service delivery in Fife and beyond. To this day, FAS maintains a team of some 15 volunteers who all receive extensive training and support, which can take up to some three years to complete. These skilled volunteers deliver effective interventions for vulnerable people suffering from a range of alcohol-related problems. As we have heard, since 1995, FAS has also provided alcohol counselling services in primary care across Fife. Uh, it started out its important involvement in primary care with participation in just some six practices and now FAS provides alcohol and substance misuse counselling in some 30 surgeries, health centres and hospitals throughout Fife. Uh, in fact, FAS added substance misuse services to its core activities, further to partnering with the Fife Community Drug Service in a project in 2011 called ADAPT. This project provided a range of supportive help for people in need, including access to services through recovery clinics, structured alcohol or drug counselling, and through diversion from prosecution, a scheme, in fact, which ran until 2017, with more than 6,500 referrals being received from Police Scotland. And I would probably like to know why the scheme is not still uh, running, and I will be uh, seeking to, to find that out, because it sounds to me that that scheme was doing a very good job indeed. As we have also heard fast from the Five Community Drug Service merged in 2015, and the ADAPT service continues and is uh, indeed the primary alcohol and drug triage service in Fife for people with opiate, recreational drug and alcohol problems. In the round, some 850 vulnerable people each year are helped 
And uh, its success lies, I believe, in the fact that FAST recognises the complex needs of individuals, perhaps living chaotic lifestyles with no family or uh, particular professional uh, support. Uh, a recent development has seen FAST introduce, as David Torrance says, what are called Kearney Clubs, which are designed to help people who are suffering from isolation and loneliness, perhaps due to health issues, including alcohol and drug problems, or perhaps due to bereavement, or perhaps uh, due to unemployment, or perhaps due to all uh, three of them. Kearney Club uh, support workers help people build social skills and confidence, and so far, over 240 people have been helped. And I'm pleased to know that there is a Kearney Club in uh, Cowden Beath, and also that FAS is supporting and has been supporting an excellent new initiative called Our Wee Cafe in Kelty, which I had the pleasure to visit some weeks ago. Uh, it is perhaps worth noting that Kearney Clubs were recognised by Five Voluntary Action this year with a Super Startup Award. And as we have heard, happily in November, a further three years funding was received from the big lottery. So I would like to say, Presiding Officer, a very well done to all involved in securing uh, such funding. It is not an easy task uh, and it really is a credit to all involved. Um, it is clear that the Fife Alcohol Support Service plays a pivotal role in tackling alcohol and drug problems in Fife and has done for many years. It is a great credit to the founders of this charity and to the current board, staff and volunteers that their interventions have made such a difference to so many people who were in need of a bit of help. I would wish to take this opportunity to pay tribute to each and every one of them and to thank them for all that they have done. I wish FAS continuing success and stand ready as MSP for Cowden Beath to help in any way that I can to ensure that this important work can continue to make a difference to so many individuals and families right across Fife. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Alexander Stewart, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to take part in today's debate and pay tribute to David Torrance for bringing this debate to the Chamber this, this evening. As we've already heard, uh, Fife Alcohol Support Services provide a Fife-wide community-based confidential one-to-one -one alcohol counselling service for individuals uh, and their families uh, who are affected by alcohol problems. For 40 years, FAS has delivered uh, uh, this uh, counselling uh, and also provided uh, psychotherapy services for individuals across that. And I welcome those who've turned out today to be part of the debate uh, and are here uh, uh, in the, the chamber uh, to support it and also in the gallery. Uh, the charity provides specialist help for people with a drink problem related to issues that may be underlying and that could be having a regular or a binge drinking issue uh, and we've already heard some of the facts and figures about what happens in Fife and the difficulties uh, that some of these individuals uh, are encountering uh, and the, the, the trauma that leads them to uh, some of that uh, a drink problem. Uh, you know, the, 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 the charity is there to extend a helping hand on, on a personal level, on a family level, on a social level on an employment level and a lifestyle issues level. And these are all vitally important to identify and try to ensure that individuals are given the support that they require. The counselling and the information provided uh, is there to maintain effective relationships with relevant organisations to ensure that they get the support they require uh, across the piece. Uh, they also provide community-based counselling services designed to meet special needs of those affected by uh, alcohol-related problems. And moreover, as you've already heard, there's a large number of volunteers who have given of their time and their talent to ensure that counselling is taking place. Uh, and that's providing the information, the education, the training and the research uh, with regard to uh, prevention and early diagnosis uh, that gives individuals uh, uh, the, the based uh, opportunity for them to have intervention-related uh, problems with Ray. And we've also heard that 23,000 fifers have uh, had the support from this. That's an enormous amount of individuals, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. And each case is quite tragic in some ways. Uh, the individuals found themselves at that situation and needing that support, but they were given that support uh, by this organisation and that's helped them get back on, uh, uh, on, on the right path. And that is in itself a, a huge contribution to the community. In addition, you know, it was three years ago at uh, the drug services uh, 
embraced uh, and they became part of uh, that process where they joined forces together to tackle both alcohol and substance misuse problems. And we've already heard about the, the kind of clubs that they have uh, within uh, and that FAS has employed dedicated project workers to identify loneliness and isolation. And both of these conditions make individuals sometimes turn to the drink or have the opportunity to find themselves at a low ebb uh, and that seems to be a release for them. Uh, so Deputy Prime Officer, it's worth mentioning that the exceptional work that they've had has been rewarded by the, the National Lottery. Now, in 2016, they received £149,750 from the big lottery, a massive amount of money for them to help set up network for adults to help them connect with their local communities through their county clubs. Uh, and that that was then followed uh, in October when they received over 350,000. Now these amounts of money are already been mentioned are hard to obtain, but for them to obtain such large sums proves that they are actually hitting the mark and getting uh, the opportunity to fund and be funded by these organisations to ensure that they are given uh, something back to uh, the communities that they represent. And by setting up these action plans and by making sure that they're realistic, that they can be achievable and the regular monitoring that goes on. So FAS has done a huge amount of work across the and they, they have punched above their weight. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, Fife Alcohol Support Services has been an invaluable resource to Fife, as well as a great help to many individuals. I commend and congratulate all who are making such an effort and such a difference in supporting individuals who are at risk. This organisation goes the extra mile, it's gone the extra mile, and it deserves the accolades and recognition of a debate in the Chamber this afternoon. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I firstly uh, add my thanks to David Torrance for bringing this debate to the Chamber and allowing us once again to shine a light on what is a, a very important, important subject, I think especially at this time of year. I mentioned before in here that uh, uh, early on in my time in this place, um, I, I'd uh, spent some time with Ad Action uh, looking to see if I could speak with some of their service users as part of that initial preventative health investigation, sort of early intervention. I wanted to look at what had, uh, get back to the sort of brass tacks of what maybe had set them along that, that path and maybe what other choices had been available to them at that time. And let me tell you, uh, Deputy President Officer, that, that was a real eye-opener. Those in recovery uh, uh, had suggested to me that I was under the misapprehension that they'd had a really terrible time. On the contrary, he said some. Uh, to start with, he said they were having a great time. They were down the pub with their mates. Uh, Mary was maybe not the exact word they used, but I'm sure you get the gist, uh, presenting officer. And this could go on for as much as a few years before their life really started to unravel. Losing their job, their family, their house, and finally, their so-called friends down the pub. Where they got their next drink became the real driving force in their lives to the exclusion of everything else. That deputy presiding officer is a very isolated and lonely place to be. And once in that cycle, it's extremely difficult to break. With addiction comes not only the mental health issues associated with said addiction, but more often than not, there is an underlying mental health issue that takes them down that path in the first place. However, another issue that arose consistently was that some mental health services would not engage with those still in the grips of their addiction. So they're sent to the third sector agencies tasked with tackling that addiction. The problem with this, of course, is that addiction agencies are generally not equipped to deal with complex mental health problems. And although they will never turn these cases away, the chances of successful outcomes without a mental health intervention alongside the addiction services are much reduced. reduced. You see, Deputy Presiding Officer, many of these cases are people who are struggling because of trauma and poor mental health. And without that multi-agency support for the individual plan, conversion rates can be poor. And for rural areas such as the constituencies that I represent, this trauma can go unseen until it becomes a major issue. The other issue I wanted to mention was the recent reports that the lowering of the alcohol limit for driving has, initially at least, not had the results that we had all hoped. I do not necessarily think this should come as a surprise. I think in reducing the alcohol drink limit, the people who would be most affected by the policy are likely to be those who would be considering popping into the pub for a, a swift pint and a glass of wine after work with colleagues. They would recognise the new laws would likely put them close to or beyond the legal limit and would most likely just forgo that afterward drink or at least replace it with a soft drink. 
However, for those who would get behind the wheel of a car after a few drinks, they are highly unlikely to pay attention to any change in that legal limit. So those who would have been caught uh, by the police for drink driving prior to the tightening up of the laws would still be prepared to take that risk. See, Deputy Presiding, Presiding Officer, reducing the legal limit, driving limits in itself uh, is not enough. Uh, to be effective, a long-term public campaign needs to accompany this change in legislation. Furthermore, an ongoing educational program with policies to tackle the underlying drivers of alcohol and substance abuse, I think needs to be in evidence. We had a debate in this place on drug and, drug and alcohol strategy recently with some very good inputs uh, from across the chamber. And I think that conversation needs to continue and to develop and to evolve into positive action. I've long been an advocate of the need to support the third sector in more collaborative approach alongside the NHS and council-led services. I think David Torrance quite rightly highlights the great work uh, that's going on in his constituency. And I would also, uh, again, like to, to thank the fantastic work being done in East Ayrshire by many third sector agencies and our NHS against a backdrop of, of limited resource. Deputy Presiding Officer, to conclude, I would suggest that addiction is a health issue and that, that I know will continue to get support from across this chamber. Deputy Presiding Officer. I call Joe Fitzpatrick to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, first of all, can I add my congratulations to David Torrance for securing tonight's debate and uh, take the opportunity to place on record my thanks to, to FAS and all their staff who have been providing treatment and support services to the people right across Fife, as, as we have heard, for over 40 years. And obviously to add my welcome to those from FAS who are in the gallery with us tonight. Um, the motion specifically focuses on FAS, but it, it would be remiss of me if I didn't also draw attention to the many other organisations um, working across Scotland who undertake similar work. There is excellent work taking place in communities right across Scotland to support those who are amongst the most vulnerable in our society. Um, so I haven't yet had a chance to, to visit FAS, but um, um, I'm sure um, any of the, the five members might um, have a have an invite coming in the post soon and, and I'd be keen 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 to take that up if if so invited. Um, but I have had the opportunity to meet um, and been fortunate enough to meet of course. I thought you were going to refuse there, Minister. I was saying uh, better not try that on all the Fifers the balcony. <laughs> David <laughs> Torrance. Thank you. Um, thank you for taking that intervention. I do believe FAS's AGM is on the twenty ninth of August. Um, next year, and they would like you to be a guest speaker. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll put, put the invite <laughs> through the, the, the usual um, um, uh, methods, and if, if that's an invitation that um, comes in and I'm able to take it up, depending on other diary commitments, then it'd be something I'd be keen, keen to do. But uh, whether it's at the AJM or at another uh, opportunity, I'd be keen to, to visit FAS and, and see firsthand the, the work that they are doing. Um, um, uh, first hand. Um, I have had the opportunity, however, to, to visit a, a number of other organisations across Scotland who are, um, um, and to speak to the staff and to people who are benefiting from treatment and support services. A couple that I particularly want to talk about today are, um, uh, I recently visited the, the Cairn Centre in Dundee, which is where we launched the drug and alcohol strategy, and it was um, really refreshing to, to speak to individuals who had um, benefited from that services directly. Um, I was able to also speak to some parents um, and, and partners of people who benefited from the this, this, this service there just to see just, just how important that support had been for them. Uh, another group um, which I was particularly impressed with, and I have met several other groups, but one that I was particularly impressed with um, was the Family Addiction Support Service in Glasgow. Um, and, and it was really powerful to hear directly from, from um, parents and, and partners who'd, who'd been, who'd in the main lost um, family members or who had family members who were still um, receiving treatment from, from um, various addictions, whether alcohol or, or drugs. And it's really powerful for me as a minister to be able to get those first-hand experiences so that I can make sure, and we all as, as, as MSPs can make sure that um, our policies are, are fit for purpose. Um, and the, the one message I have taken back from, from uh, visiting those organisations is that these are really important services and they cannot um, 
the importance of those services cannot be underestimated. The role they play <clears throat> is crucial in providing vital support for people in our communities um, that need it most. So, as, as I mentioned, um, at the, when I visited the Care Sen Centre just over two weeks ago, it was to launch the Scottish Government's new alcohol and drug strategy. So, a key aspect of that strategy recognises that in general services, um, in general services need to do more um, to better meet the needs of those most at risk. And so that will in part involve taking a person-centred approach so that treatment and support addresses people's wider needs. And there's been some talk from Claire Baker and, and um, from uh, Brian Whittle um, about why, how addiction, it's not, it's, it's very often not an isolated issue that people have to deal with and mental health, isolation, employability and homelessness are, are, are all issues that um, are there as well. So I was particularly interested to, to hear from Alexander Stewart um, that the service in Fife had, had, had extended to, to start looking at um, isolation and loneliness. Um, so, so helping people reconnect with their communities and um, so, so I think that that's really important. Um, I recently took part in the Sleep in the Park and, and in, in Dundee at Slessor Gardens and um, I was able to spend some time speaking to ad Adaction, which uh, Brian Whittle has also mentioned, and to hearing just about the complexities of, 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 um, of addictions. And, and it's clear that often homelessness is something that goes hand in hand and it can be very difficult for people to start to challenge um, addictions if they don't have a a regular place to um, to lay their their head at night, um, so it's really um, is refreshing that we have the opportunity to reflect on the the positive work that's going on in Fife Alcohol Support Services and and elsewhere as they work to support vulnerable individuals struggling with drug and alcohol use, um, <clears throat> particularly the aspects of the work that focus on addressing that loneliness and social isolation, which we know and as I've said, goes hand in hand with um, harmful drug and alcohol use. Um, through, the, through the debate, it was really interesting. A number of people, David Torrance first and, and others mentioned the 23,000 people supported, a huge number of people supported. And, and I think as David put it in, in that life-changing contribution from, from the service in FAS. Um, Claire Baker, um, also mentioned the, the fact that they um, had, had moved into extending the services to, to include drug services, which I think is really important because a lot of the, the, the challenges in relation to um, addiction are, are very similar, whether it's drug or alcohol. But importantly, um, Claire Baker also mentioned that for many people um, in, who, are, who are suffering from addiction, the, there's a lack of sympathy from the public and, and that's one of the things that from speaking from people who are cu currently or, or previously going through addiction, the stigma that is attached is such a barrier to people um, being able to, to seek the help and support. So that means that people at FAS have to go that step further to, 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 to try and find people to be able to provide that support. And I guess my message from today would be to, to, to people um, as we move into the festive season, just to, to try and be a little bit more human. And if someone's got an addiction, just try and see them as a human being and just a little bit of love and compassion can go an awful long way. And we, we see that with the 200 volunteer counsellors that um, I think Annabel Ewing talked about um, um, working out of over 30 locations right across Fife. So th that's people who are, who are giving of their own time, as, as we heard, um, in order to help others. And that's, that's really important. And I was interested to hear from Ann Annabel Ewing that um, the number of people helped each year has gone up to something like around 850 people. That's a, that's a lot of people every year. Um, and I'm sure that's making a real difference. I, I think um, this is a, a topic that I'm sure we will come back to um, on many occasions. Today's de debate was um, about recognising um, the... The, the work that's taken place in Fife over the last 40 years and highlighting some good um, examples of good practice across the, the, the chamber. Um, as I've said uh, two weeks ago when we talked about the drug and alcohol 
um, partnership. This is something that we should be working together on, um, and I'm very pleased to, to work with people across the chamber on this. So if there are MSPs who want to meet with me to discuss how we can work together on this, then please, please make contact, and I'm, I'm really, really keen to, to, to do that and to take this forward so that we can make a difference for so many vulnerable people across Scotland. In conclusion, I want to, again, congratulate David Torrance on securing this debate and FAS on providing over 40 years of vital treatment and support services and wish them a very happy birthday. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed. <laughs>